We were in the international waters. We were not in Israeli waters. Uh, it's unacceptable what was done. We had internet all the time. We had cameras all the time. We had live broadcasting all the time. So even they, even all the world could, could see what we were doing. And we were just civilians, just activists, humanitarian workers, people from all over the world with one message, to break the siege, to show that it's unacceptable in the 21st century to have open air, air prison like Gaza. There were people killed with cameras in their hands. In my last message to my wife, I wrote to her two things. I said, look, probably we will not arrive there um, alive. I said, if anything happened from this bad scenario, uh, don't let uh, our politicians and our media um, to stay calm, to be quiet, uh, but make a big pressure on them. Since I remember for myself and watching TV, the news, I remember the news about Palestine, and then the first and the second intifada, and then the shooting of the father and the son in the year 2000. All these people that we had on the ship, people from Europe and the USA and Canada were together with us. Also, we had people from Australia. Uh, we had the oldest guy who was more than 80 years old, and we had a baby on the board also. Get to know each other, who was working what, uh, what was his aim, mission, why, why he joined the, the same thing, what kind of ideas, uh, what they have done for Gaza or for Palestine that made me as to have a feeling to be proud of what am I doing. Uh, we heard that they are around and they, they ask that we should stop and we should go to their city on the coast of so-called Israel. No one of us accepted why we were sailing if we will not do our best to come to the place where our intention was. Was it around four o'clock or something? The, the first uh, call that they're here, they're here. Don't panic. Uh, vessels that have surrounded uh, the ship. Um, there are some injured passengers now on board. Uh, tear gas has been used as well as live bullets. Jamal Al Shayal Al Jazeera. They started shooting first from small boats. After a couple of minutes happened, the second attack, they, they tried again. In one point, I saw my friends, they said, yes, but we were not afraid from the town. They're shooting uh, also from a boat. There was a helicopter, and but also these small boats, Zodiacs, their commandos were shooting on us. First people, injured people, started uh, coming from outside, not just from inside. And uh, one or two of them already w were the ones that were killed. But in that time we couldn't uh, recognize it. Then we, we stayed inside for two hours. They took all over the ship. They started taking us one by one outside so they can search us, they can hand handcuff us. Then we saw again some of the wounded people. We were like this from seven o'clock until noon. In this moment, it was very hard to have the hands on the back, to not be able to move, to be not given water, not to go to the toilet. Our friends would ask something from the soldiers that they, they, they have some need. They would answer with brutality, they would answer with beatings. After 24 hours inside the ship, they told us to write, to sign the papers that we came 
illegally to Israel and that after that they will deport us back to uh, our countries, which we refused. We said, we never wanted to come here. You took us from international waters. We were kidnapped, so why, w why would we sign anything like this? And then they said, okay, if, you don't, you're, if you're not signing, we have a special jail for you in the desert and you will be the new people there. And then we saw a guy entering and he started speaking Macedonian. He said that he works in the consulate. He said, your wife didn't let us sleep until we get the information that you're alive. He also advised us, he said to us, please, you have to sign it. I said, no, I want justice. I want to go to the court. And he said, you really believe in that Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East? I was like, no, but like in every stage you need to go to the court and to say that someone kidnapped you and bring you here. He said, come on, we have a saying, the judge is stewing you, the judge is judging you. Then we, we went all of our, like this group of 100 people, together to the buses and from there to the Ben Gurion airport. And there, when they show us again this uh, document to be signed, I said, what if we don't sign it? And they said, you should go in that way. And that way, there were soldiers, Israeli soldiers, that were beating our friends. The friends were coming all in blood with broken noses, legs, arms. And I said to my friends, let's listen to our, what our um, diplomat says. Sign whatever and leave from here because this is madness. When we came back to our countries, we saw that all the media were suddenly interested about the issue in Gaza. I think that there were more than 50 journalists or maybe more than 50 different media on the ship. Israelis, commandos, they destroyed all their cameras, all their the, the video, the materials, the, the, the pictures. Still there was one video that survived. It was immediately put online. Still, you can find it. There were generations who remember about the Freedom Flotilla, remember about the attack on Mavi Marmara but also people that finally saw the truth about what is happening in Gaza. Because it's not all about this attack, it's not all about this movement, but it's about how it came to this. It's about the situation of the people in Gaza. All of us on these ships, it's, it was not just the Marmara ship, there were five other ships, but we could feel for a moment, for a couple of hours, the, the suffering of the Palestinians that they have with decades. <laughs>